Officials in San Francisco have voted against letting police use killer robots in response to public criticism and objections from civil rights organizations. The city's Board of Supervisors rejected the ordinance it had passed. Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. This video is about a trendy new police robot who got banned by the people of San Francisco. So, let's get started. Allison Maxey, a spokeswoman for the San Francisco Police Department, released a statement clarifying the new procedure. Officers might use robots armed with explosives to confront, incapacitate, or disorient belligerent, armed, or dangerous criminals, she claimed. To clarify, Maxi said these robots will be deployed only in extreme circumstances to rescue or prevent additional loss of innocent lives. San Francisco's Board of Supervisors agreed to allow police to use deadly, remote-controlled robots in times of crisis. In such a scenario, officers can employ ground-based robots to carry out deadly action when the risk of loss of life to the staff of the public or officers is imminent, and officers cannot suppress the threat despite using alternative force alternatives or de-escalation measures. The board approved the very contentious regulation of supervisors of San Francisco by a vote of 8 to 3. Supervisor Rafael Mandelman has stated that while none of the police robots in San Francisco will have firearms attached, they may be capable of using fatal force in extreme instances. On Twitter, he explained that the policy allows for using deadly force by autonomous vehicles when the risk of death to civilians or police personnel is imminent and surpasses any other force choice. Chief Bill Scott of the San Francisco Police Department told CNN last week that the robot's lethal capability would only be used in self-defense. He also mentioned that officers with particular training would be in charge of controlling the robots. The robots may be equipped with explosives to break through reinforced structures, or contact, incapacitate, or disorient a hazardous person without endangering a police officer's life. To phrase, these robots would be a last resort, he stated. It's been said, if we ever have to use that option, it means lives, innocent lives, have already been lost and are in the balance, and this would be the only option to neutralize that person, putting those lives at risk or the person who has killed those lives. Despite this, authorities and locals have spoken out against the idea, which requires board approval per a 2021 California legislation. Using a robot equipped with a bomb to terminate a standoff with a sniper who had killed five police officers in Dallas in 2016 raised severe public policy concerns about the employment of lethal police robots. The employment of lethal robots is not regulated in most states, leaving it up to individual police agencies to decide whether or not to do so under generalized use of force regulations. However, police departments exploring the employment of robots to incapacitate suspects are generally met with strong criticism, for example, because of public outcry. The New York Police Department terminated a lease on a robot dog in 2017 that was intended to confront dangerous criminal suspects. Because of the show's similarities to the killer robot dogs featured in the Metalhead episode of Netflix's Black Mirror in 2017, a new state rule restricting police use of military-grade weapons led to the Board of Supervisors' vote last week, mandating that police unit in California obtain public consent before unleashing any killer robots. Despite every positive note, fears were voiced that it would be a mistake to completely remove humans from life-and-death decisions. Protests were held on December 5th outside of San Francisco City Hall and at least one of the supervisors who voted in favor of the decision has since expressed regret. Supervisor Gordon Marr of San Francisco's 4th District tweeted, Despite my profound reservations with the policy, I voted for it once more guardrails were included. I apologize. My unease with our vote and the example it sets for other cities without a similarly robust commitment to police accountability has risen. Attempting to remove humanity from governmental brutality concerns me greatly. According to Jonathan Aitken, a top university teacher in robotics at the University of Sheffield in the UK, the question presented by supervisors in San Francisco is ultimately about the value of life. He says that lethal force is never used without careful deliberation, which is true of police and military operations. 
Decision makers taking life or death actions at a distance may lack the necessary background information to make informed choices. Separation in space eliminates small nuances and features that are vital, explains Aitken. Not because the operator will think about them, but because they might not be included in the data sent to the operator. This can cause inaccuracies. Mistakes can have fatal consequences when it comes to using deadly force. And while that's all for today, do let us know what you think of the police robot and should there be robots doing a human job. To catch us soon though, click on the bell icon. Until then, take care and we'll see you soon.